This is fun to be here regularly with another devlog. Intro side, welcome to Unnamed Modern Military RTS Devlog 2. In this video, I will cover once again more technical stuff, but this time relating to units. So let's get right into it. Units, units, units. They allow you to destroy the enemy position and commit war crimes. What else do I need to say? I want these since I'm developing a Command & Conquer Generals clone mixed with a little bit called ARMS. So how would a person of my infinitely small intellect go about creating such a complex system? Well, stealing from other people. Legally, of course. To be fair though, I did write a lot of my own code that handles the selection of units, but a lot of the pathfinding logic was written by someone else, so I can actually take credit for coming up with this amazing pathfinding code as seen on screen. The code was written by Mizzizizz, so credit to him. I'll link the video in the description below. So yes, it works, but how can we tell units where to go? Well, we will need a selection manager, intersection rays, and of course, user input. So grab your tea or coffee, sit back and relax. I'll explain all this in an oversimplified manner while trying to be funny. I used an intersection ray that you guessed it checks for intersection to get the thing the player clicked on. Fairly simple, fairly straightforward, right? Wrong. Godot requires that multiple conversions be done to actually use this ray. I'm not shaming on Godot, I'm just saying it is much simpler than Unity. So after all this brain melting, it works. Okay, what now? Well, arrays. You might have no idea what I'm talking about, but you should probably do. I use an array, which is pretty much a list for C-sharp users, to hold references to all our selected objects. This is pretty cool and flexible, meaning we could have a practically infinite number of units selected. Great! Now how do we go about being able to select them? Well, this is where things might get a little bit more complex. I have not implemented the ability to box select yet, but you still can select multiple units by holding down shift. I'll put the code on screen while I explain. We have an if statement. It checks if we have a selected item preventing calls to null objects. Very nice indeed. There is also another if statement that gets the group, and if it is in the unit group, then the rest of the code executes. Now we need to get if we are holding the shift key, and the code is called modifier. If we are holding modifier and we click on a unit, then we append that unit to our selected array, and we set the unit selected condition to true. Now things are slightly more complicated. If we are not holding down shift, we first want to get all units in our selected units list and set their selected condition to false. We then clear the selected units array. After clearing the array, you append the selected item and set its done condition to true. If you are still capable of thought after that, then I recommend you chill out a little bit. That was the code explanation for this video, so um... What now? Well, of course, unit coordination. <laughs> this is Fun Hoover Radio and Game. If you like this video, then please subscribe. And back to regular scheduled programming. Due to the small amount of code in this section, I have not decided to make its own part of the video, instead have it be part of the units chapter. So we have all the fancy span selection code, now we need to command the unit so you can actually commit the sweet war crimes. This is a fairly simple thing to do so you can heal your brain while you listen. So we get if the right click is pressed and that there is actually a group on the selected object. This channel should be in a group called failure, am I right? EMOTIONAL DAMMIT! Wait a minute, that's just me. Never mind. So if we are so if there's more than one group, then we use a match statement to check for the first group, also known as a group index hero. If it is in ground, then we order all selected units to move there. I should probably be in one of those units so I can get commanded to go touch grass. I'm joking of course. I touch plenty of grass through my shoes. If it is a building, then we do some fancy math on screen to make the units form a circle around the building. This building logic will probably get more complex as I add multiple factions. Yay! That yay was so cringe. But now we have commanding units. I have not yet implemented unit attack, so I will not be covering that. I don't really have anything else in terms of technical stuff, so let me pitch my game to you. I have to get all businessy. Unnamed Modern Military RTS is a real-time strategy game set in the present designed to mimic gameplay like those found in Command & Conquer Generals along with Call to Arms. There are two factions, one referred to as the West and one referred to as the East. Each faction will use slightly different units and buildings to feel different but be playable to a player that has never played as the other side. Each engagement will be quick, harsh, and brutal, one that could determine the fate of the match. So that was my pitch. Since I don't really like the name Unnamed Modern Military RTS, I'm trying to come up with names for this project. A name I'm happy with is Brutality of War. So far I've not found any other game that uses this name. If you like this name then please leave a comment. 
while you're down there, be sure to subscribe and leave a like. In the future, until I have the prototype complete, I will still refer to this game as Unnamed Modern Military RTS, just because I should not take a name to a project that does not exist. Anyways, I've run out stuff to talk about, so if you like, then leave a like. If you don't like, then let me know in the comments. Anyways, that is all from me for now. Fun Nuber, out. By the way, this is my first video recorded on Fedora Linux. I hope this video goes well. And yes, I made that sound intentionally bad.